Hello, my name is Igor. So today we're going to talk about uh, not very popular uh, thing like cross-distro collaboration because everyone does it his own thing and nobody he doesn't care about other people. So I'm federal com contributor for six years, though my open source account is probably older than that. I couldn't find a way how to check that. Um, I'm member of Federal Packaging Committee, the people who are defining the packaging guidelines for Federa. I'm author of Rust RPM, the tool which is uh, generating the spec files for the Rust packages. Um, I'm contributor for OpenSUSE, basically mostly for Rust stuff uh, for a few months. And I'm also a contributor to many upstream projects randomly pushing patches everywhere. So, for today, um, we have a uh, look at uh, current status between distribution differences in RPM packaging. Uh, then, basically, uh, some small why. Why we actually care about that. Why do we want to have same packaging between different distributions. Uh, then I will tell you how it happened with the Rust. And then, basically, just small recap what to do and how to do. So uh, current status is that for C and C++, the packaging is more or less same. Like you have same macro, make, build, make, install, which is more or less works. For CMake, it's actually quite different for OpenSUSE and Fedora because uh, with OpenSUSE, it builds out of the tree by default. And for Fedora, it does not. And there are many things which are different there. Uh, the package names are also different in many cases. In Fedora, we just name packages like glib2, while in OpenSUSE, it's split to the uh, sub-packages like libglib20 by so name. But actually, I found out that it's not everywhere. It's just half and half, probably. Uh, for Python, Go, and Ruby, uh, it's kind of similar. The Package, uh, package names uh, for Ruby, it's Ruby gem and the gem name. For Python, it's Python 2, Python 3 package name. Uh, for Golang, it's Golang, GitHub, whatsoever. But actually, the macros inside and the how spec file looks is really different. Like, really different. OpenSUSE does a lot of magic to automate that part. Fedora does not. So it's, it's just horrible. Because you cannot simply take open source spec and build it for Fedora. You just need to rewrite it entirely. So, and Rust is actually identical. You can take Fedora spec file for the Rust package, build it on open source, and install it on Maje, and it will work without any problems. So, why we actually care about all this? Well, first thing is we don't want people to duplicate work because. People can spend time on writing some automation tools, improving generators for Rust RPM, for gem to rpm whatsoever. They can work on infrastructure instead of doing the monkey work by rewriting spec files between distributions. That doesn't make any sense. And obviously, users are confused because when they switch to a different distribution, they say, oh, it used to be libglib, and now there is no such package. What do I do now? How do I install? So basically, for upstream developers, it's they need to have 10 different ways of describing which dependencies do you need to build your package, build a tool. So how did it went with the Rust? First thing we did is uh, I created proof of concept, which works for Fedora. So it's generating spec file. And it builds for Fedora. It was not that easy, but we did it. Yeah, and then definitely we just went and started using and didn't tell anybody like everyone else does, but not really. So then we actually uh, went to Magia and OpenSUSE and asked people, OK, here is we have some proof of concept. What do you think about it? Uh, like, uh, tell, tell me uh, your preference, what you don't like, what we need to improve, and stuff like that. And apparently, we got some Debian guys coming to us back and also telling, oh, this looks cool. We definitely cannot use it because we have dev packages, but we can make some agreements on the uh, where we install files, how we package things, and basically stuff like that. And also, we collaborated on the, some upstream patches, for example, for Cargo. Yeah, so we're working together. 
we got some flag uh, minus minus target, which is specifying for which distribution you want to generate spec files. It is, uh, when I say it, you can take spec file from Feather and build it on OpenSUSE. Uh, it will work, but OpenSUSE has its own guidelines. For example, the license header in the spec file, which we don't have in Feather because all the spec files are MIT licensed by default, unless you specify otherwise. Well, in OpenSUSE, it's from what I know, it's requirement to have the license header on the spec files. So, what were the challenges? They were obviously none, probably, no. Uh, the main challenge was that we needed to change RPM. So for the RPM, we needed to change, um, um, we needed to have new de uh, dependency uh, description, so we needed to have a uh, way to specify that I need create foo with a version more equals one zero zero, but less than one two zero, for example. And that's actually quite complicated in the RPM ecosystem because RPM is the core part of the whole distribution and you cannot just implement something and then, hey guys, start using it because yeah, it will take take a while. So I think we had first proof of concept done in beginning of 2018 but we could not start using it everywhere in OpenSUSE until probably 2019, almost. So, what are the results of the of the work? Basically, we established IRC channel, uh, Feather Rust, where we have people from OpenSUSE, we have uh, people from Debian, we have people from Fedora, from Magia, probably some other distributions which I don't know about. Um, we got as I said, we got compatibility between uh, distributions that you can take spec file from there, build it there and install it somewhere else. It will work. Uh, so we got only one repository which contains all the macro, all the tooling and everything. So people just use it. Um, basically, uh, file system path, user, share, cargo, whatever names are there is the same between distributions. Uh, yeah, and spec files are the same as well. And if we compare RPM and deb distributions, uh, we have basically agreed on the file path. And even the package names are somewhat similar because they don't use devil, but they use dev. So, for example, in Fedora and OpenSUSE, we have Rust sort of derived devil, while in Debian, they have libras sort of derived dev. So, looks very similar. So, people are not that confused. So, basically, some short instruction how people should work on this is basically create proof of concept which works for you. Uh, then basically, no, before creating that, uh, people should actually look what's available there. Probably already start, somebody started working on something what you want to create. So if it's there, just join and work together. If not, just create proof of concept and then ask people for feedback, find out who is interested and make sure that basically other distributions are aware of what you're doing and they can give their comments. Obviously, you need some place to discuss everything, not just in five different mailing lists. You send to OpenSUSE Devil, RPM Ecosystem, Fedora Devil and everywhere. Just get some IRC channel or one mailing list and discuss everything there. And yeah, don't forget that once you got some people, you cannot just go and break everything because you just wanted to have something nicer in your distribution. But then everyone else will say, oh, this doesn't work for us, so we are just going to fork it and be done with it. And basically what I did, I became a more contributor to the other distributions to basically try it out and see basically whenever I do any changes in the Rust RPM, I, I'm testing it on the OpenSUSE to see basically whether somehow, basically how does it affect that distribution and do changes which help both distributions. Yeah, this was actually much faster than I expected. <laughs> So I suppose we can go to the questions or suggestions or anything like that. Obviously, the collaboration is really hard between distros. It's not easy, we know. So what was the hardest part for you to get three distros together, even four? So um, mostly it was 
talking, finding right people, that was quite hard. It's good that we had uh, Neil Gompa who actually uh, told me, hey, this guy is uh, doing something similar in uh, OpenSUSE, this guy is doing it in Magia. And what helped a lot was that Fedora was, I think, the first distribution which packaged compiler, uh, Rust compiler in the RPM. So actually, other people, when trying to package it, it's horrible to package compiler. So they actually started looking at Fedora, and they actually got to Fedora Rust be before we started doing packaging for the Rust applications. Um, other hard part was uh, basically RPM, RPM changes. It's, it's really hard. All right, if, if I uh, get it correctly, you're mostly talking about Rust applications. And uh, is there a, anything that you can also share uh, across distributions regarding building the compiler and cargo and all the tools? So actually, the, I'm not sure about OpenSUSE, but uh, differently between Fedora and Magia, actually the spec file is the absolutely the same. The, uh, it has, I think, three, four conditionals in there. Uh, like if Magia, then uh, because they have architecture i586 and uh, that is not supported by upstream. I mean, it's not supported by upstream and it's it doesn't exist in Fedora, so there are few ifs. But apart from that, the spec file I think is like 99 percent same. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it turns out, for example, on on OpenSUSE, we would like to have the same spec file uh, for uh, the current or running distribution, the tumbleweed and for some older distributions so that you can get a Rust compiler on, say, SLE 12, and we don't have to maintain two different packages. And that is a, that, as you know, that is a, that is a challenge because Rust, compiles, uh, Rust is compiled by Rust, uh, which is in turn compiled by LLVM. So uh, you would either have to bundle in the LLVM or you would have to depend on, I don't know, which LLVM. And then you start to get the, the differences between different, like... Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Fedora and Magia do not bundle LLVM, which just use shared library, but basically if you try to compile it for older distribution, which just does not have new enough LLVM, you probably will need to bundle it and it's becoming just a mess. So, um, yeah, I think in Ipil we do bundle LLVM because uh, LLVM coming from RHEL is, is too old. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so is there some repository that uh, keeps all those tools and, and uh, template, uh, spec templates at some place or is it just in some packages somewhere? So it is um, Rust or PM repo. I think I can open it. Uh, yes, it looks horrible. Yeah, whatever. So we have Rust RPM repo, which has actually uh, some templates between the distributions. And uh, you can see that, oh no, it's not this folder. It's Rust RPM templates. Yeah, so basically main spec is the same. It just specifies name, version, release, whatsoever, some templating magic. So the only difference part between distributions is, um, yeah, license header. So some basically it's for OpenSUSE. Um, yeah, uh, the group, because in Fedora we don't use group thingy. Yeah, and the change log. So basically, uh, we have one repo which contains all the templates, and it's just a generator which is generating spec file. And we have same. Uh, you can supply some configuration. Uh, for example, you can. I probably can show it. Yeah, so basically if you have uh, such configuration file, you can use Rust RPM for different distributions and it will, this actually, 
will you can override for open source uh, for each distribution you can have different requires if they're really different but apart from that you have just default section which is compatible between all of them so basically I, uh, when i'm packaging uh, things like this for open source i just copy this configuration file there and generate spec file for open source using same tool on fedora So it's great to see the collaboration across the different distros. What about collaboration with upstream Rust? Um, well, we do have some patches for the upstream, which we obviously send them. But for now, uh, we had three major things, I think, uh, to fix. One is that uh, uh, previously, when you publish some crate, it uh, it still saves workspace, path, and stuff like this in the cargo tomal, which is creating a pain for the packagers. So this was fixed by the Rust upstream, quite quite fast. We got a few more things which n needs to be fixed, and seems that upstream does not care much about that. So it seems we just need to go and write patches for it, and they will just accept it. They seems do not have some time to to work on it. And what architectures are you testing against? So basically, for Fedora, we have uh, six architectures, which is x86-64, i686, um, PPC-64LE, S390X, um, ARMv7HL, and ARCH-64. We used to have PPC-64, the big Indian one, but we don't have it anymore. Uh, we never had S390 in the Fedora as the primary architecture. Is there any interest of smaller distributions to join this or to take over the work? Um, which exactly distributions, those small ones? Because actually I did not see those small distributions coming and basically asking for any help. They probably just exist somewhere. I don't know what they're doing. I never heard about them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, one more question. So if this Rust stuff is done, what's the next language you're doing according to this uh, <laughs> procedure? Oh. So the next thing is I want to uh, get Fedora closer to the open source and the other way around. So for example, what I uh, really enjoy about open source is the build system. It's amazing, but it has broken version control system, at least for me. <laughs> it's painful to work with. So basically, what uh, one thing which I want to get Fedora to do is uh, I want people to stop writing release in there because OBS is generating that automatically. So and in Fedora you have to always rebuild yourself, increment release, and do all the manual work which people hate. So basically, I want to get uh, Fedora closer to open source in this way. But on the other hand, I want open source to start using, for example, Git as the version control system. So, <laughs> so we can get a bit closer. And probably at some point I want to get Ruby and Python stuff to be better with help of the RPM folks. I'm looking at you, Florian. So from what you have seen, how to improve cross-distro collaboration? Obviously, it worked for you, Rust guys, but mostly it's not where it should be. So I think we need, uh, I th uh, actually RPM, uh, RPM upstream w uh, wanted to get distros closer, so they created RPM ecosystem mailing list, which is supposed to be read by different distributions, which is not very true at this point. So I, I would probably suggest to subscribe to RPM ecosystem at rpm.org. And basically, like whenever we want to do something with the packaging, like an entirely new ecosystem which didn't exist before, or basically somebody wants to rework old stuff, basically bring it there, discuss it between, between the people, and get from there, not just do it. So we also created a an, an repository on GitHub for those stuff. So the idea is in the long term to move more of those scripts out of RPM core because it's, we really can't take care of it properly. 
like things like Python and Go and all those languages, and to have uh, the tooling for those packages move to separate repositories that uh, that are maintained by the communities, shared between the distributions, and basically RPM only lending its name and, and, and place as a, as a neutral uh, playground for for people to meet and, and do that. But we have. We created a repository, but we didn't put too much work into getting people in. It's something we need to do um, for ra probably rather sooner than later, because there's still a lot of stuff that can be improved, and it's currently uh, uh, distributed over all those small parts in some distribution, some files, and probably not even being uniform within the distributions. And um, so there's a lot still to be done to make uh, Make this easier for everyone. Yeah, and probably stop doing all this magic uh, inside the RPM macros and get some patches to RPM to improve it. Not just try to work around it, but try to get some features in the RPM. Nowadays, it's much easier than it used to be many years ago. So, like for example, the sub packages for Python 2, Python 3. Uh, Florian is working somehow on it in the RPM upstream. So let's just uh, help RPM upstream to get some patterns for the packages, uh, whatever we need to automate packaging. Let's get it to the RPM upstream instead of trying to work around it in distributions. More questions? So I think if no more questions, uh, such stickers are available somewhere around. Feel free to grab them. Uh, I suppose that's it. Thanks.